Today we're going to continue uh, talking about uh, basically uh, strain gauges uh, and kind of, again, this fundamental equation that we're going to use throughout uh, this portion of the class, especially in lecture 11, which is we are going to correlate, again, strain to one over your gauge factor F, some change in resistance over R. So this is one critical equation, one way we can relate strain to that change in resistance. Also, remember last time we introduced this equation, which is the change in output voltage over your excitation voltage, gauge factor over 4 times epsilon 1 minus epsilon 2 minus epsilon 3 plus epsilon 4. And that was for your Wheatstone bridge, that standard configuration. 1, 2, 3, 4. And you could have strain gauges here, 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 or resistors. Uh, and that's how we're going to relate, again, strain to some change in resistance. So one of the ways that we kind of... Uh, we kind of introduced this a little bit with the gauge factor, but um, there's basically this issue of calibration. How do we kind of calibrate uh, and like kind of figure out, well, what strain, what change of resistance will produce what type of strain? Um, so how do we calibrate that? Because again, strain is this kind of difficult uh, quantity to measure. So we need to first calibrate. Um, so some known sample and then kind of figure out our system's response. Um, so one of the best ways that you can actually do this is uh, we can kind of induce some known change in resistance and then figure out, okay, plugging into these equations, what will be our then change in strain? And that's how you can kind of calibrate your device. So one way we could do this is known as small resistance change uh, and shunting. Um, so we'll see that in just a second. So basically we're gonna have this switch S uh, that we're gonna close. Um, there's gonna be some gauge resistance and we're gonna add basically this RS, the shunt resistance. So let's take a look at uh, kind of the next page and kind of see how we deal with or work with this type of calibration. So initially, you can see here, our switch is open. So when our switch is open, so let's look over here. Let's We're going to specifically focus on just this arm initially. So when my shunt is open, or my switch is open, so when switch is open, what is my resistance in uh, my one arm of this, again, this is our standard, standard Wheatstone bridge, Wheatstone bridge configuration. So what is our resistance when the switch is open? Well, the resistance of the one arm is just the resistance of your screen gauge, right? It's just RG. When we close the switch, so switch closed, what is that resistance in my one arm now? Well, these two are in what? Uh, they're in series, or uh, excuse me, they're in parallel. So my resistance to the one arm there is just going to be RG, RS over RG plus RS. So when we go from open to closed, we're going to have some change in resistance. So the change in resistance is just going to be, uh, I'm going to say closed open, it is just going to be R1C closed minus my R1 open. And you can kind of see that uh, shown here. And this is going to be your equivalent change of resistance. So we have this expression that we've kind of done previously. Again, we left it general for R, but in this case, it's going to be the, that change in R of your strain gauge. So when you plug in for what is that change in resistance, it is just going to be this value right here. You plug in and you'll get the equivalent strain once we close that switch and add that shunt resistor. So once we add this shunt resistor, we are changing some change in resistance. We will measure some equivalent strain. So that equivalent strain is just going to be this value right here. Now, the careful thing you want to kind of think about is once you add that resistor, this value, even though it has a negative sign here, we're going to take the absolute value. Absolute when we're working with problems, uh, absolute value of the strain. So the equivalent strain is just the absolute value, disregard that uh, kind of uh, negative uh, in there. So you'll just plug in. You, we typically always have to know the resistance of our strain gauge. You'll know the resistance of the shunt. We know F, uh, that's kind of given, given to us by our manufacturer, or we could solve for F if we know the given strain, but that is gonna be your equivalent strain. So that is kind of the one way that you're going to kind of calibrate uh, your strain gauge to figure out, okay, what change in resistance uh, leads to what strain, or what strain which leads to what change in resistance. So that's it for calibration today. So next time we're going to get into uh, basically using uh, 
these rosette strain gauges. Uh, we're going to deal with some kind of complex equations, but it'll all boil down to, once again, looking at uh, more circle and rotating in strain space this time. Uh, more circle strain space. So uh, more on that next time. So yeah, that's about it. Uh, have a good one. See you next video.